This will be an interesting time because I have no idea what's going to end up being said today. I, for the last, I, I, I found out about this um, a couple of weeks ago, and for the last 10 days or so, I've been rehearsing what I want to say, talking, thinking, what do I want to say? What's the message? What do I want to get at? And uh, usually, morning has come. Usually it's in the shower, you know, and I'm, my mind's just free and going. And the problem is every single day, what I was going to say was something different. So yesterday, when I was thinking about it, it was different than the day before. <laughs> I've got like four days worth of material here to present in about 30 minutes. So um, we're going we're gonna to try to get this done, right, Keith? Yes. So um, I'm going to ask you a question. I'm not going to give you the answer till later. If someone were to come up to you and say, I just made $3 million last year, what do you think they're feeling? What do you think they're feeling? Hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> 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 We're going to find out. <laughs> exactly. Two types of people in this world. This is not my original thought, by the way. Someone that presented this at First Friday seven years ago. <laughs> okay. So if you were here, you'll, you'll remember this. But two types of people in this world. This has stuck with me since I heard it that day. There's thermometers and thermostats. Do you know who you are? Get back to that in a minute. Just a little bit on me. I think a lot of you know me, so I'm not going to spend time here. Um, as Denise said, you know, I, I, uh, I'm a CPA by trade. I've... Um, been in many businesses, two multi-billion dollar companies that were publicly traded, CFO and CMO roles, um, several smaller companies, 400, 500 million dollar businesses, and then some small companies, you know, 8 million, 9 million, 10 million dollar businesses. A lot of manufacturing in my background, but I've been in a lot of different type of organizations, big, small, medium, et cetera. Um, I'm a turnaround expert. I uh, go into companies that are upside down somehow. They're, uh, they're either losing money or they're struggling to grow or their management team's a wreck or whatever it might be. Um, and I come in to do the fix work. Um, I've been doing that for over 30 years now. I'm a business owner. As she said, I I own two different companies. I'm on the board of three different manufacturing businesses. And uh, so I, I've been an employee. I've been a consultant. I'm an owner. I have, and, and I say none of this, frankly, <laughs> to oppress anybody. This is just why I'm here. This is my story. This is who I am, okay? It took 40 years to get to this. I didn't start out at this. I didn't uh, aim for this. <laughs> It took 40 years to form me, shape me, mold me, and, and make me who I am today, okay? Um, I'm also a coach and a mentor. I, I have um, several people that I coach on a regular basis. Um, and I'm a thermostat, okay? Um, what is leadership? Everyone has their own ideas. You can't go on LinkedIn and not see someone's opinion <laughs> about what is leadership, <laughs> right? And everybody has their quip, their soundbite, their I got it all the epiphany, right? What is leadership? Um, it's been analyzed. It's been talked to death. It's, it's frankly, it's becoming passive, right? Leadership, leadership. Leadership. Everybody's talking about leadership. Well, let me make sure you understand. There is no absolute. There is no pure definition. <laughs> leadership is whatever it takes in that moment with that situation with those people. <laughs> That's leadership, right? Rise, lead. I like to frame it around. It's the art of moving people from here to there. A lot in that art, it's not a science. There's no checklist, there's no to-do list, there's no how-to manual, okay? Moving, leadership is never standing still. You're not just in the status quo. 
Okay. If I mean, if you're if you're not growing, you're dying, right? We've all heard that, read that. I mean, it's everywhere. People, you're not leading if there aren't other people involved, right? You're not, I mean, maybe you're leading the dogs. I don't know. Maybe you're a dog, but no, seriously, you're you're not leading unless there's other people involved. From here, first of all, you have to know where here is. <laughs> where are we? What is our situation? What is the thing, the reality? To there. Oh, where do we even want to go? Right? If you don't know where you're going, you just might not get there. Right? Yogi Berra, quote. I love quotes, by the way, so I, I, I use a lot. If you don't know where you're going, you might just not get there, right? So leaders adapt to the current situation. They're involved in some sort of directional change, right? With other people going from a place they've identified as the current reality to a place they want to get to as a future reality. Okay, can we agree with that? Yeah. Feel good? Yep. <laughs> What's the most important trait for a leader? Self-awareness, right? There's all kinds of reasons people lead. There's ego, right? There's narcissism. <laughs> There's reluctance of sentence, right? There's by default, there's all kinds of reasons people lead. But if you don't know who you are and who you're not, you will not become an effective leader, right? You may be giving directions or commands, <laughs> as, depending on who you are, <laughs> right? And they may be coming from a place of ego and not a place of true understanding, or true vision. Do you follow me so far? Leaders cannot go it alone. Right? The one thing, and I, I have coached, counseled, and mentored many leaders, the one thing over and over and over that failure in leadership has in common is they tried to do it on their own. They didn't get help. They didn't seek out counsel. They didn't seek out wisdom. In the multitude of counsel, wisdom is found. Right? Um, what, what, one of the comp companies I own, I'm 100% owner. I don't report to anybody. No accountability. And I went out and hired a formal board of directors. And I pay them to be my board. Right? I don't need them. I, I, I've got, first of all, I've got plenty of years of experience. Second of all, we're making money. It's a profitable business, right? <laughs> Thirdly, I don't need them to slow me down. I can make decisions on my own, <laughs> right? But in the multitude of counsel, wisdom is found. When you're going out looking for that coach, that mentor, that support system, make sure they're different from you. Don't go find another one that looks like you or sounds like you or thinks like you or has your background or has your experiences. Find someone, some ones who are going to challenge you. Bring a completely different frame of reference, right? Think differently than you and have the guts to tell you when you're wrong. That's the most important. Having a bunch of people that will flatter you with words or are afraid they're gonna lose their job if they say something wrong to you, <laughs> that then you can't get good, true, honest advice from that, right? So have coaches and mentors, and then beware of deception. Deception, being wrong and not knowing. Think about that for a minute. I know most of you in this room are never wrong. I get it. <laughs> but sometimes we're wrong. We're where we're wrong. We're being manipulative, right? We're using 
something to get something else. But there are so many times when we're wrong and don't know it. Now, here's the problem with that. When we are wrong and don't know it, one, we're not trying to figure out why we're wrong because we don't think we are, right? We're not wrong. Two, we're not seeking out advice. We're not wrong, <laughs> right? We're not looking for the truth. We are not wrong. And you will never find out on your own, you're not wrong. Someone else has to tell you, you're wrong. That perspective you have, that thought you have, that, re that recollection of the history you have is wrong. That's not how it happened. Or that's not the only way to interpret that situation. Or that's not the only conclusion from that analysis. Right? Someone has to have the guts to say you're wrong, and you have to have the guts to hear it. Right? And so with your self-awareness, you learn, am I open to being told? Them? Do I start from the position, I might be wrong about this. When I, when I sit in rooms with people, I guarantee you I'm the last one speak. I don't speak first. We have a, it, um, a thing on our wall at, at one of the companies. It's, um, it says, um, listen first, right? <laughs> listen first, right? We have two ears and one mouth. Listen twice, speak once, right? Measure twice, cut once, right? Listen well. I, I say that someplace else in here. Listen well. That you don't have all the knowledge. You don't, you are not the sole source on rightness. Right? So the most important thing you can do is become self-aware. The only way you really become self-aware is to get other people involved. Because you're not going to figure out who you are until you listen to others. So get yourself some mentors, some coaches, and get yourself some honest feedback. And that's the only way you're going to grow into leadership. So you want to be a leader. What's your job? There's a lot of jobs of a leader. First of all, have a purpose and cast a vision, right? Leaders have purpose and have vision. A leader without vision is just way, right? And you cast that vision, share that vision. Secondly, set expectations. Thirdly, provide clarity. Next, establish boundaries. Determine the priorities and make decisions. I hate leaders who sit around, listen to a room, and no decision ever is made. <laughs> My God, let's make a decision, <laughs> right? <laughs> we don't need to sit around and wait for the 99th and 100% data point to figure out which way to go. We're all successful business people, right? Rely on your gut for some of it. I mean, don't run off half-cocked with not any analysis. But if you've got 75, 80, 85% of the analysis and, and everything else is maybe this, maybe that uncertainty, rely on your gut. Make a decision. Go, <laughs> right? and have a team around you that says, here we go, right? Um, so I, I could spend all day on each and every one of these. I'm not gonna, because we only have now 20 minutes. <laughs> um, I wanna talk a little bit about expectations. Everyone in this room have expectations. You had expectations about what was gonna happen this morning. Whether you said it or not, whether you realize it or not, everyone has expectations. Right? So even if you haven't been able to express it yet, our experiences from our past set expectations. We've all been in relationships in our past, right? That set a level of expectations for our next relationship, <laughs> right? And for, for um, our friendships with people, right? We've all had friends that have moved on or gone someplace else. And with future friends, we either set up to do something different <laughs> 
or to replicate what we had, right? And we go into it with expectations. I treat you this way, you're gonna treat me that way. Um, same thing with jobs. You go into a job, this company, they provided me this and this and this and this. So when I go to this company, I expect that. Oh, that's not what I got. Now what? Right? And we're crushed because our expectations aren't met. Right? I can't tell you how many times I've been in situations where I was disillusioned because I walked in with a set of expectations. I just expected. I just assumed. I just knew that this would be the norm. This would be the reality. This is the situation. And it's not over and over and over again. Right? Because your expectations come from your past, and your expectations come from your past, and mine come from my past. And what we envision for our future, what we're trying to achieve in our future, right? So go back to self-awareness. Self-awareness is how you mine your own expectations, right? It's it, it, you need to explore what do I expect it? Or where is that expectation coming from? What's causing me to expect that, right? And then re understand that results are only ever really understood when they're compared to those expectations, right? I'm happy in this job because it met my expectations. I'm unhappy in this job, not because it's a bad job, but because it, it didn't meet my expectation. I expected to be home every night, and now I'm traveling. I expected to be directing this team, and now I'm coaching or sitting on the sideline. I expected whatever, right? Results are only ever understood when they're compared to the expectations. So back to the question. If someone said they just made $3 million last year, how are they feeling? It totally depends on what they expected. If they expected to make $300,000 last year and made $3 million, they're pretty damn happy. <laughs> right? If they expected to make $30 million last year and made three, they're pretty upset. It has nothing to do with his $3 million, a good number or a bad. The result itself is never the important part. Never. It's the result compared to the expectation that matters. So if you don't know what your expectations are, you won't understand your feelings when the results occur. And if you're a leader, you set those expectations out up front, right? Be clear about it. Here's the expectation. I expect to make $3 million this year. Okay, now we know. And all of our success or failure will be measured against that number, right? I expect to be leading my own team by next year. Okay, now we know. And all of your happiness and sadness, if I can use the words wrongly, will be measured against that expectation, right? <clears throat> so it has not, it, nothing to do, the result has nothing to do with the absolute of the result, but how it compares to your expectation. Okay, cool. Clear on expectations? All right, clarity. Another thing, uh, uh, another um, important aspect of leadership is clarity. The number one complaint I hear everywhere I go, nobody ever communicates around here. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever said that? We'll all say it, right? This organization doesn't communicate with anybody, right? My boss never tells me what's going on. My staff never tell me the situation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Communication, 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 communication. Okay? We've taken 100 employee surveys. 
Every time it comes back with communication. And every time we do more communication, we get worse results. What? How's that even possible? Right? Well, I just want to make a point about direct versus indirect communication. Some people are direct communicators. Right, Dada? Some people are indirect communicators. <laughs> Yada and I had an interesting conversation the other day at the grocery store. Um, we, we were just getting some groceries and stuff, and he says to me, um, oh, I, I want to get some wa some alkaline water. Okay. So we're doing our shopping, whatever. At the, en at the end of the shopping trip, I'm standing right next to the water aisle. And I said, oh, by the way, did you still want water? He said, it's over there. Okay, I know where it is because I'm standing next to it. But do you want it? An indirect communicator says, I just answered your question. A direct communicator says, I have no idea if you, what, what your answer is. Understand that we all have different ways of communicating, different types of communication, and understand that communication completely differently <laughs> than what you might think. Right? Are you a direct communicator or are you an indirect communicator? And do you understand who the person on the other side of that conversation is? Are they a direct communicator? Are they an indirect communicator? Right? I'm hungry. Okay. When we get home, well, let's go to dinner. Yeah, sounds good. Almost home. So did you want to go home first or go to the restaurant first? I'm hungry. Really? I thought we already knew that. <laughs> <laughs> What's the answer? Have you ever had these conversations? Yeah. Was it clear in your mind? <laughs> so, as a leader, your job is to provide clarity. Right? Don't let the conversation end at a, in a place of uncertainty. See it through. Joel and I, back a few years ago, were working on some stuff and, and, had, and had a mantra of finish the conversation. Ask a question, get a sideways answer that doesn't answer the question, and drop the subject. That was the moda, modus operandi at the moment. And we had to stop and turn everyone upside down and say, finish the conversation. <laughs> right? Get, don't stop until you get the result you're looking for. And if you're a direct communicator, ferret that out. And if you're an indirect communicator, don't be frustrated by a, a, a direct communicator wanting an actual answer to the question they asked. Right? It's not okay to imply or infer, depending on which side of the conversation you're on, the answer. You can't just, and you can't require someone to infer the answer from your comment. Do both. Go ahead. Indirect communicate. That's fine. Go ahead. Direct communicate. That's fine. Because they both are needed. You're not going to change an indirect communicator to become a direct communicator. And you're not going to change a direct communicator to become an in indirect communicator. It's not going to happen. So do both. Because your job as a leader is to provide clarity. Right? Don't let it be unclear. What you repeat, you remember. I've said this for over a decade. <laughs> what you repeat, we used to say practice makes perfect. Well, that's not true, right? Practice might make permanent, but bad practice makes bad reasons. <laughs> if I practice my golf swing poorly, when I get on the golf course, I'm going to have a poor golf swing because it's permanently ingrained in me now, <laughs> right? What you repeat, you remember. If I repeat this, I'm going to do this, you know? If I, the news media's got this, right? Repeat a story a thousand times and pretty soon, you don't even know if it's the truth or not. Pretty soon you just start to believe. Repeat a lie a hundred times. You will become, you will believe it is true. You, you, what you repeat, you remember. Okay? So, repeat, and, and, and what you don't repeat gets lost. Because there's noise everywhere. Right? Everywhere you go, there's voices saying things. Communication does not happen once. It's not a one and done. 
what you repeat gets remembered. My brother, who wish he were here, um, he he, he um, said to me one day, you know, I, I, I've told them what our vision is. I told them where we're going. And, and I keep getting, we don't even know where we're going. I said, how many times did you tell them? Once. There's a thousand voices telling them things, right? You got to hear it over and over and over and over and over. As a leader, your job is to constantly repeat it until it's coming back to you unprompted, right? You know you've repeated it enough when they now start saying it back to you without being prompted. What you repeat, you remember. So actually, I said a decade. I've been... When I remember when my son was like six years old, I was teaching him. What you repeat, you remember. And it got to the point where we didn't even say that anymore, right? It was, what you repeat, you remember. And it just became a thing. Then the other point I'm going to make here is listen well. A lot of us listen through our filters, right? We have a veil over our face. That, that veil is shaped by our experiences, our expectations, and our, our, our past um, attitudes and our feelings and all of that. And most of us listen so that we can respond instead of listening so that we can understand. It's a huge problem. If we listen to the point where now I can respond, I can argue with that point. I can, I can, I can disagree with you. I, I can prove you wrong now. If we listen to respond, we don't listen to learn, to understand, right? Get rid of your script. Throw away your preconceptions and listen to learn. You're probably still right, but listen anyway. People feel heard, understood, and valued when they're listened to, right? Listen well. And, and have, let that listening be interactive so that you can repeat back what it is they're saying with understanding, with compassion, right? Listen well. After all the listening, there'll be time to say something. But don't start saying this when they're trying, especially direct versus indirect communication, <laughs> right? You may not even be hearing. If, in fact, most of the time, the first handful of things they say isn't even what they're trying to say. Because there's something else going on. You can't. There's some feeling, some disillusionment, some dissatisfaction, something underneath that's not being said yet that if you take the time to listen well and allow them to open up and get to the roots you'll hear what they're trying to say clarity remember there's a long list of things on leadership like i said i could spend a long time on each and every one of these subjects going through for the sake of time priorities one of the hardest things for a leader to do is to say no to good ideas. I got a great idea. <clears throat> yeah, wow, that's a great idea. Oh my God, that's a great idea. But you know, we only got 15 people on this management team and there's only 40 hours in a week. And at some point, there are so many good ideas we can't possibly do all. And which ones are we gonna do? And some people get told no, and they're like, I'm not respected. Hmm, really? Priorities. Understand you can't do every good idea. So, as part of your communication, as part of your clarity, as part of your vision casting, set out what is our priority? What does matter most? Right? Now, that doesn't mean be rigid. We set out our plans at the beginning of the year. We're not moving from it. Hey, there are times 
where something opportunistic comes up that does, um, not, I don't want to say require, but that does warrant, that does warrant our change of course. We can't plan for everything. We can't expect everything. We can't anticipate everything, right? So sometimes a course change is warranted. But you always start out with these are our priorities. And this is what matters most. And the only time we move from that is when, as a, a group, we agree this thing is well more important than that thing. Right? That takes conversation, communication, and at some point, a decision. And ultimately, decisions are the leader's responsibility. We are or we are not doing it. When we say yes, that does not mean these things were not important. And when we say no, that does not mean your idea was not important or, or good. Right? We, we um, are keeping our eyes focused on what matters most. It's not about an individual. It's not about a single goal. It's about what uh, in the leaders in, in, in the business world, or, or I'm speaking mostly, because this, this is true, it, whether it's your family, right? This is true, whether it's the gym. <laughs> this is true, it doesn't matter what, what social, even with your friends, right? You, you have to keep your eyes on what matters most. Right. Jump over to the friend side of, the, of, of this equation. There are friends in your life that are healthy, and there are friends in your life that are toxic. Right. And four years ago, I started a saying I cannot abide the forces of negativity in my life any longer. And I cannot abide the forces of negativity in my life any moment. If you have forces of negativity in your life, you have to at least acknowledge that, right? Self-awareness, understand what that is, why that is, and why you alert it. I've had to cut out some very dear friends because of the toxicity that was brought in my family as a result. It's painful. But I'm healthier and happier than I've been. Keep your eye on the ball. Priorities. Leaders, we establish priorities and we keep everyone focused on the priorities. Right? Um, so, oh, I missed the... Uh, where is it? I, I missed the uh, thermostat and thermometer. <laughs> I jumped right by it, I guess. Are you a thermostat or a thermometer? Thermometers can tell you the temperature of the room. Right? They're constantly announcing the temperature of the room. 72 degrees. 72 degrees. Oh, 74 degrees. 78 degrees. The temperature's going up in here, 82. Can anyone hear me? It's, it's 88 degrees now. Can anyone hear me? It's getting hot in here. Is anyone, it, 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 we're, we're sweltering, we're sweating. It's hot. Thermometers, they know exactly every problem there is. But they can't do a damn thing about it. Or won't, as the case may be. Thermometers can. Thermostats. They know the temperature. They have a temperature gauge built in. They don't even announce the temperature. They just change the heat. They just change, put on some AC, or turn the heat up, as the case may be. So thermostats change the current conditions. Thermometers announce the current conditions, right? Leaders don't make change. I mean, the leaders don't lead unless they're making some sort of change, right? Moving from here to there. There are thermometers in this room. 
There are thermometers in this world. We love to announce the temperature, right? Do something about it. Do something about it. Following is a choice. Right? You've chosen to be in that job with that boss. You've chosen to be in that relationship with that person. You've chosen your current situation. And I know, I, I, we can analyze that to death, okay? But by and large, we are products of our choices. Following is a choice. Leading is a call. Someone else decided to put you in charge, <laughs> right? No one's following you unless they're choosing to follow you, and you're not leading if no one's following you. So they had to choose to let you lead. You didn't get to make that choice. Some of us are in roles that require us to be leaders, and we're doing it for all the wrong reasons and all the wrong ways. <laughs> Right? We know those leaders. Nah, none of them are in this room, but we know those leaders. Right? The following's the choice. You don't like who you're following? Change that. Be a thermostat. Change the temperature. Either change the, 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 the temperature in that room or go to a different room. Right? Get a different job. And forgive me for saying it that way because I'm not being flippant. Okay? I'm, I'm making some points as a matter of points of emphasis, not literal here. But you, but when you're following, it's by your choice. You do not have to be in that place. And I'm not saying you shouldn't, because we all have to follow someone or someone, <laughs> right? At some point, we're all following someone, <laughs> right? Just make sure you realize that who you're following, you're doing because of your own choice because we can make a change. Okay. Take personal responsibility. I hate it when people blame everyone else for their situation. Stop playing with blaming. Right? Leaders aren't blaming. Leaders are bringing us all together to go a single direction. And if, 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 if you don't want to go to that place, that is nothing wrong with you. Nothing at all. Let's go get on a different boat. Or bus, as Jim Collins would say. Go get on a different bus. Right? If, if that's not where you want to go, it's okay. Take responsibility for your choices. As a leader, take responsibility. Don't blame others. Well, if you'd have just done what I said. Take responsibility for your own behaviors, your own attitudes, your own choices, your own decisions. And be transparent. Another, I, I, sorry, I love, I love quotes, I love sound plays. Transparency breeds trust. Trust breeds effort. Effort breeds results. Most of us as leaders, that's what we really want, right? Results. We have some sort of outcome we're looking for. What we really want are results. And you don't get there by slamming your hand on a, on a podium. Transparency breeds trust. Trust breeds effort. Effort breeds results. If you're not getting the results, go look at yourself. Are you being transparent? One of the things I absolutely never do anymore, used to, is set a false deadline. Why? A false deadline. Now, now the person across from me knows I'm not being transparent and honest with them. Now they know I'm manipulating them. How is that helpful? I need it Thursday. No, no, no. I don't really need it Friday. I need it Thursday. I need it Thursday. Thursday. Why do you need it Thursday? Well, first of all, I shouldn't have to tell you. Second of all, here's why. I need it Thursday. Okay. Transparency breeds trust. 
I think we did a great job on that. I think we did a shitty job on that. Which is, it, you know, and, and you will get both reactions from me. I had a situation one time where we were a large government contractor. We had a client come for a quarterly review. We were sitting in a room. There were seven of them and 15 of us. And we were reviewing the results of last year. And the meeting did not go well. And it was a two-day meeting. And the client raked us over the coals for everything we do. It was a complete mess. So we suffered through for the two days. At the end of the session, the client left. I asked my team to stay. Um, they all had flights to catch. We were in Baltimore, I think, and they all had different places to be. Um, some of them wanted to go see the game that night. But sorry, clients have to change. This has to be discussed. So we all got in the room, and I looked at him and said, you know, you all know me. I support you every day. I encourage you every day. I never tell you a lie. I am transparent with you in everything we need to do. Today, you're going to see the other side of mine. I said it this calmly. So today, you're going to see the other side of mine. This sucked. This is a complete F up. This can never, ever happen again. And we're not leaving this room until each and every one of us has an action plan on how we're turning this around. And one by one, because I had taken the time to build a relationship, be transparent, invest in who they are and who we are, and set clear expectations, and, and all of that, one by one, went around them. They all stood up and said, this is my fault. This is my responsibility. Here's what we're going to do about this. And then the next one would st stood up and said, and, and this was our fault. And we're doing this, and, this, and we're taking it to a T. They all stood up. They took personal responsibility for their parts. And that never failed again. We became the number one contractor for that agency for, for like four years in a row. Not only that, we grew that contract by 300% in the next four years. Because we honored the customer, we heard them, and we took personal responsibility. That happened because they and me had worked out a relationship to know that we could trust each other, that we could be honest about it and trust each other. So, conclusions, following his choice, leading his goal, take personal responsibility, be transparent, beware of personal deception, being wrong and not knowing it. I guarantee you, guarantee you there's something you're wrong about and have no idea. Guaranteed. And remember, amateurs practice till they get it right. Professionals practice till they can't get it wrong. Phil Mendelssohn was famous for, for doing his workout every day, hitting balls, you know, working on the driver, working on the forearm, working on the wedge, and not being done until at the end of the day, he made a hundred bucks in the world. He got fun. I go out to the driving range, I hit three balls, I hit two putts, I sink one. Good, now let's go. I'm an amateur. <laughs> I'm an amateur. <laughs> right? I don't work hard at it. Leaders need to take a professional approach to their leadership. Never, ever, ever stop working at it. <laughs>